Hey guys, it's Matt Beck from freesaloneducation.com here with another cue and haircut video for you guys. Um, you ask the question, I do the haircut, so just let me know what haircuts you're looking to learn. Post them in the comments below. Like and share this video with your friends and also hit us up with the hashtag freesaloneducation on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, any way that you can reach us to let us know what haircuts you're looking for. Um, this haircut request was from Samantha. Uh, Samantha Wong. Samantha Wong asks, I'm new to your page, but I'd like to see a stacked slash layered bob. So I thought about this quite a bit, and I think a lot of people have different opinions on how much is a stacked bob, what is layering. So uh, this isn't technically layering, but we did work our way through the back, created a nice stack in the back, and then an A-line feel to the haircut. So it's got a lot of swing to it, um, nice side parting, See, oh, she looks nice. So nice side parting. We did get that stack in the back again, like I said. So Samantha, I hope this is the haircut you were looking for. Uh, let me know what you think. Um, we also finished this off with a lot of dry haircutting techniques and a new one for you guys as well. So I hope you guys like this haircut. That's why I'm doing them for you. Uh, leave in the comments below again. Let me know what you think. And let's get started with our step-by-step -step layered stacked bob. All right, so we're gonna start off the haircut by taking a right-hand side parting. Um, definitely find your guest parting where they're gonna part their hair uh, for this haircut. Then we're gonna take that and direct it slight diagonal and then down center back. Then my next parting is gonna come from uh, mid crown and it comes right across the crown um, down past the parietal to the recession point of the head. Uh, a real diagonal forward section, which I will show you uh, in one second. Then we take from that same point in the back, um, another section that goes down to behind the ear and we section that away. I'm using braids to section it away just because sometimes it's cool to do that as a presentation point. Plus I, I never braid hair. So this is uh, a way to make sure that my braid skills are still there. Um, all right, so uh, there is the kind of you can see it's a rounded section. Um, it's hard to describe really what the shape is, but hopefully you can see it there. So now we're gonna work our way up the head. I wanna break this down for you, so let's pause it right here. Okay, so let's go over the fundamentals of what a stacked bob is. Um, the way that I'm gonna start off this haircut is I'm gonna start it with a base. The base is gonna be at 90 degrees. Um, sorry about the crazy drawing, but I think that this makes sense this way. So 90 degrees coming straight out of the head. Then as I work up the head, the head shape starts to peel away from my fingers, which is gonna change the degree. That doesn't mean I'm really changing the, the finger angle that I'm using, just means that the head shape is moving so the degree is changing. But I do wanna keep in mind that I wanna keep it around 45 degrees because if it's not, it's going to start to stack too much and get too heavy. So we wanna keep it nice and light all the way up till the roof point, which we're gonna call it the roof, which is the hair that's gonna fall over the top of everything. I wanna make sure that that comes out at an exact zero degree angle, nothing less than that, because if it is, it's gonna be way too heavy and it's gonna throw off the whole entire look. So I hope that this picture helps you guys but uh, that's the way that I think about this whole haircut. So we go through working uh, palm to palm, slight diagonal forward section, but not much. The only reason I have it diagonal forward is because it makes me more comfortable um, to do this haircut. If I have it vertical, that's just a weird way to tweak my arm, um, so I don't wanna do that. So now I'm gonna go through using a uh, traveling guide. Um, so I'm bringing everything to the previous. Uh, that's my goal through this haircut because the, I want to have a really strong foundation. Now, as I work my way to the side of the head, right behind the ear, everything will be overdirected straight back. So we are creating, those of you that went to um, the school of triangle, square, and circle, we are creating a triangular shape to this haircut because everything's being overdirected straight back. So you can see the elevation of my hand keeps raising through the haircut, but then when I cut lower, it lowers. So I'm following the head shape through, uh, but know that you can see how it collapses at the bottom from pretty much the occipital bone down, but then the top is a little more stacked up. That's that weight, that density that we want to create the stack uh, in the haircut. 
overdirecting everything straight back. Somebody asked me about how do I do this without creating a hole. Um, it's pretty simple, and I'm going to show you guys that you don't want to freak out right at this point right here. Uh, that's not a hole. What you've done is you've layered at the occipital bone, so it pushes some of that uh, light hair down. We're going to cut all of that off in the dry cut, so we're going to connect those lines together. When you cut hair this short uh, in a bob, you're going to have that kind of because it's not meeting up with the hairline. So we're going to go through. We'll remove that later uh, and make it look nice, and you'll see how you can make that adjustment. But I think a lot of people freak out at this point thinking that they've cut a hole and you haven't. So you're good to go. All right. So uh, as we're moving on, we're going to move to the right side of the haircut. Now my finger angle is pointing down. The reason my finger angle is pointing down is because that first off it's comfort. Second, um, I was combing the hair towards the center of the head on the opposite side. So now when I move to the right hand side, I still want to be combing the hair to the center. Um, that would be very difficult for me to do if I kept my finger angle pointed up. So it's really about comfort. Comfort equals consistency. I say it in every video, but it's the truth. So just make sure that you stay comfortable. So keeping that angle and that elevation as I work through the head, you can see my elevation goes up as I work down towards uh, the nape of the head, my elevation goes down. So I'm really following the head shape, but still over directing everything straight back. So you can see now we're going to remove a little bit of that weight that was from our layering at the occipital bone that will start to connect it, but we're really going to go in um, and Honestly, I actually I cut that off because then throughout the video, you guys aren't thinking, wow, look at that tail coming off of there. And then I'm going to go through and actually do my finalizing at the end. So a little fun fact for you. You can see the elevation coming straight out from the head. So if you look at what would be straight up from that would be 90 degrees. So that would be straight off the top of the high point. So straight out is going to be zero degrees. That's going to give us our heaviest point. It's a point that I'm probably going to remove in the dry cut. I actually know I'm going to remove because I already did the cut. But um, I will remove it later. But I don't mind having that weight in there just to see how it looks at the end. Because if somebody had finer hair, you might not want to remove that. All right, opposite side. Comb out that braid. Over direction straight back. using our guide from the previous cut uh, panel, just working our way through. And you can see this is a finish of our wet cut. It looks really nice. Again, could look great on curly hair. Um, I get that question every single haircut. Um, I just don't have curly hair mannequins, but you can see that nice stack on there. If they did have curly hair, I would probably continue my layering a little bit more and I wouldn't go so much at a zero degree angle at the top uh, because what that would do is build up a lot of weight in the haircut. Um, so really curly hair, you don't do anything. You don't really do anything different. You're still attacking it the same way. The only difference is you're changing your elevation to work with the density. But you would do that whether it was fine hair, coarse hair, curly hair, whatever it is, you're going to change that elevation based on the density of the hair. We'll go through and iron it. Give Bricado a shout out. It's the Vibra Straight Iron. Now I'm going to go through with my dry cutting. So I started off the haircut and I used the prototype scissor from Mizutani that I'm uh, playing with right now that's supposed to come out in uh, summer of 2016. Um, so I'm really excited for that. But now I'm working with my Mizutani Puffin, which is a dry haircutting scissor. I love this scissor, um, and I'll show you guys why in a little bit. It's got a really sharp point on it, which is good for this kind of detail work. It's got a really fat blade, and it slides through the hair um, really, really well. I, I always say like butter, but it really... It's, it's amazing how soft it feels in a haircut. Now, this isn't a perfect scissor for cutting straight lines, but it's great for dry cutting. That's what it's for. So now I'm going to take a horizontal section just to soften. This is where I had my zero degree angle. So this is the top roof part that we talked about. I want to go through and I just want to soften that line. You can see how I look underneath it to see how soft that's falling and then go through horizontally using a vertical uh, sectioning just to cut and remove some weight. Now, this is our final dry cutting technique. This is one of my favorite techniques that I just, I hadn't really pulled out in, a, in quite a while. This is called no thumbs. So you pinch the scissor 
with your pointer finger and your thumb, and then you work and you just open your ring finger up and down. What this does is it adds a lot of texture to the haircut. You do not want to see a ton of hair falling out of this technique. So a lot of people, you might not really see anything falling. There is hair being cut in there. Um, so you're opening and closing the scissor as you're working, but it's very little pieces. And what it's doing is just causing, taking a little bit of uh, air, adding a little bit of air to the haircut and a lot of texture to the haircut. So um, I just like having texture and movement in haircuts. It's just, I think it brings it to life. It personalizes it. So the no thumbs technique is pretty cool, uh, and it's just something you can add in. If you wanted to, you could go through and point cut. It would be a very similar effect. This is a more random scattered effect with this technique, and it's definitely impressive to your guests um, if you do it correctly. If you don't, it's not impressive. So we can go through the side, do the no thumbs technique with that as well. Basically, the way I look at it is you're opening the scissor, you're grabbing hair, and then you're pulling it down and cutting it out. So as you lift up, when you're coming down, you're cutting into the hair that you're lifting up and just removing little pieces at a time. So you can see there that hole is, is gone. Um, what we call the hole, I guess. Um, that was my quotes in the air that you couldn't see. Uh, so we went through, we drew our line with our Mizutani Puffin. Uh, then we go through and we texturize, and it just connects everything together. I uh, gave a little flip to the end of the hair with our iron, a little bit of spray to finalize the haircut. It's a really cool haircut. Um, I'm glad it was requested. It's, it's, you know, I think it's definitely a popular haircut, and it's a classic technique that you can use on pretty much any every day in the salon for sure so hope you guys like this cut please hit that share button on social media and share this haircut with your friends i had a lot of fun doing this haircut guys if you have any haircut requests make sure that you leave them in the comments below and i'll see you guys on the next video thanks